recording. Hit the lights and turn on your VCRs and sit back. It's a show the critics said couldn't be done, wouldn't be done, and, and shouldn't be done, which hurt us. I just want you to know that when you said things like that. But we're here to prove them critics wrong. And, that, and that's tough to do, granted. And here's the proof himself. The, the man of the half hour, my uncle, the star of the Red Green Show, Red Green. Hi, Harold. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Harold's right. I'm the proof. And he's the pudding. <laughs> uh, we got a heck of a show for you today. We got a list of guests as long as your arm and twice as much fun. <laughs> of course, you've already uh, met Harold and you've probably made some kind of a judgment on him. And my guess is that you're right. Uh, anyway, uh, we had a heck of a time at the lodge yesterday. Uh, Stinky Peterson decided that we're using way too much uh, gasoline, which is expensive uh, in the boat, and that we should switch to an alternate kind of fuel and put a washroom in the rig all at the same time. Uh, but Buster Hadfield wanted to go with the solar powered. Uh, Excuse me, Uncle Red. Uncle Red, is this going to be another one of your strange stories about what you and your buddies did? It always ends up in personal injury and private property and wildlife damage. Well, this is a, a vignette of what happens at the lodge, Errol, that's all. Uh, well, yeah, okay, okay, yes, we could go that route. Or, or we could just go, like, right into the next segment, right? Because that would be good, you know, we can just do that via an electronic transition, like that. <laughs> that's what the viewers want, I mean, that's, you know, what they prefer. That thing makes me car sick, Harold. I want to just tell my story. Okay, it's just... Saying it's TV, you know, and people like TV. It's based on moving, you know, moving images, moving pictures. Moving bowels. Okay. <laughs> Messages in the medium. That's what Marshall Dillon said. <laughs> now, is there any reason we can't go to the next segment? I want to tell my story about the boat. Well, that's a good reason. <laughs> Jack was a hell of a man. If anyone can lift something, strong man can. I remember one day, just for a prank, Jack tried to lift the holding tank. He strained and pulled with all his might. And then there was a loud pop, and his spleen come out through one of his body orifices and damn near killed the guy. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, I'm gonna show you how to change your headlight. And I know, I know what you're saying. Uh, everybody knows how to change. Well, they don't. There's a lot of people who don't know how to change a headlight, and it's something you can do yourself. And not only do you save money, but it, it gives you a feeling of self-reliance, because, you know, you can't trust anyone. <laughs> uh, now, this here is uh, Bill Smith's car, and he told me he's got a headlight burnout, out. And uh, so I thought I'd just, uh, you know, kind of do him a favor and, and change the headlight. I might charge him five bucks, you know. <laughs> uh, so, now, uh, I'm not... The screwdriver's not big enough. Uh, uh, screwdrivers on these, uh, I should say the screws on these are uh, uh, way back in there. But you know, who the heck designs these things? Probably mechanics. <laughs> now I can't see if the screw is, uh, is a flathead or uh, a Robinson or a... Star. I can't see what kind it is. <laughs> so, uh, um, Okay, we'll just uh, try another method here. I think this will just—I think this will just pop right off here. <laughs> Get that in there. Take it the other side. Ah. Uh, all right, all right. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, so wiring. I guess it's uh, catching that in there and. Uh, We'll just use the, uh, this is a special tool that I uh, keep in my closet. <laughs> some metal or something caught back in me. Here. Oh, that's, all right, the, I think the, you know, the wiring is, is the thing that's messing this up. So we'll just clip that out of there. You know these new cars, they got so much wiring in them, it's just uh, more things to go wrong. <laughs> You know, what's just occurring to me, I think, with one of these modern cars, this is the type where uh, the hood, the, the headlight comes out, comes out from behind, from out in the back, and so what you need to do is you need to open the hood. Uh, try this. Oh, 
Okay, now, I think things are going to go a little better now. Oh, God, I can't. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, oh, safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, I can, I can uh, get her out uh, from the inside here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take a few things out uh, to get at her there. <laughs> we'll be right back with a lot more fun than uh, the rest of the story about my wind-powered boat. Oh, great! So now you got like a choice: a fun or the story. <laughs> It is summer. You run down the beach and embrace the surf. The ocean responds with a huge wave that removes your trunks. <laughs> your first brush with summer love. And crayfish. <laughs> now, as I was saying uh, before I was electronically assaulted, we wanted to build a, a solar-powered boat. So we uh, got a few of them uh, solar panels, and we went around the lodge here and uh, collected up all the old uh, car batteries. Came to about 95. <laughs> and then we hooked them up to uh, one of them little electric uh, trolling motors. And then we went out, a bunch of us, for some night fishing. But yeah, it didn't work out all that well. And we suddenly realized that, and I guess the solar thing has got, you know, something to do with the sun. <laughs> so as we were paddling back, uh, we thought maybe we should switch over to a tidal powered boat. But then the lake is really not all that big. And besides, none of us has really any idea what tidal power is. <laughs> so we decided to go with wind power. It seemed like a heck of a good idea. And the first step would be to get ourselves a windmill. Excuse me, a, a windmill? I mean, if you just want like a wind powered boat, you get a windmill? Oh, why don't you just get like a sail? You know, like a sail? <laughs> well, we have to have a windmill because a boat has to have a motor for a man. OK, Harold? <laughs> I mean, uh, sailing is for wimps. You know, a bunch of guys in those little white shorts and sneakers, you know. I don't know, Uncle. That's not a very nice thing to say to classify people like that. I'm sure there's some very nice people who have sailboats. Name three, Harold. Um, Sir Francis Drake, Magellan, and my hero, Ted Turner, the man who colorized America. Ted, this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> what about my boat story? We sailed away from it. Oh. I'll tell you something, Hap. Uh, fishing has got to be the most relaxing thing there is. Yeah, that's for sure. I used to do a lot of fishing when I worked on the ranch, just to unwind, you know. What ranch was that? Oh, well, the Circle K, bar, double R, uh, inverted ampersand. <laughs> that around here, Hap? No, no. No, that was Kenya. That was years ago. I. I can't remember the owner's name now. Big fella. Australian. No, Austrian. Or Afghani or something. <laughs> what kind of cattle do you have down there? Do you remember? No cattle. Cows are considered holy animals over in Kenya. No, no, I think that's India. Huh? <laughs> Kenya went the same way for a while. <laughs> the big Indian population over there. Anyway, we raised tigers. That was tough work. <laughs> You're telling me that you looked after a herd of tigers? Well, it wasn't a big herd, two or three hundred head. But it was a handful. Roping and branding them, it was violent work. Rodeos were nothing but a bloodbath. Well, half that sounds like a terrible way to make a living. Yeah, I had the worst of it. I had to train tigers for the circus. <laughs> I had to teach them to take a man's head in their mouth without biting it off, you know? I covered my face with horseradish. Worked like a charm. <laughs> but, uh, my eyes were bloodshot for two years. Hap, uh, uh, <coughs> where exactly uh, was this ranch in Kenya? Oh, it's all, it's all closed down now. You know, same old story. Ranchers against the farmers. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nylon farm now. Oh, no, no, no. Nylon uh, doesn't come from a farm. It's, it's from oil. Well, you could be right. Maybe I'm thinking Dacron or Orlon or something. <laughs> 
Well, you're thinking of something, that's for sure. <laughs> Windshield uh, washer. stuff come out, we'll be fine. <laughs> Something. I'm gonna charge Bill ten bucks. <laughs> she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Yep, yeah, she's coming. She's coming. Oh yeah. Almost got her there. Got her. Oh yeah. 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 She's coming. She's coming. All right. No problem. Read up the plug. So I'll just get the replacement bulb. Pop that in. <laughs> We're all set. I'll just give that a try and see how it looks. Perfect. I guess, I guess this was the burned out headlight. Well, it won't take as long now, because we know how to do it. I'm going to charge Bill, I think. Two or three hundred bucks for this. Anyway, uh, until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh, gee, Uncle Red, great. I'm just in the neck of time, because, oh, you know what, speaking of Nick's, I got this letter from a viewer here, and he wants to know about your new nickname. I didn't know you had a new nickname. Nobody tells me anything around here. I didn't know you had a new nickname. You got a new nickname? What's your new nickname? I told you all about it, Harold. I've had it for months now. It's on the outside of the truck. Bird droppings? Hey, that is a good nickname. Harold, <laughs> I got the truck painted like a possum. We have a possum on all our stationery. Haven't you noticed that? I've even got a possum right here on our, on our show crest. So what do you suppose my new nickname is? Stupid? It's possible, Harold. Stupid's better. I mean, if you want a name that people are going to use. I mean, what's so great about a possum anyway? I like possums, Harold. They move slow, and uh, when they're provoked or disturbed or annoyed or anything, you know what they do? Sting? No, they bite? No, 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 they claw, right? They claw. No, no, they spit. They spit poison like a cobra or something, right? You spit a lot, Uncle Red. That'd be a great nickname for you. Spitting possum green. That'd Don't be great. Don't spit, Harold. Uh, no, I thought they were... <laughs> no, no. Possums, they're way too smart for that. Uh, when they're cornered, when they're threatened, when their life's on the line, they just lie perfectly still. They pretend they're dead. The other animal thinks they're dead, leaves them alone, because an animal will not uh, touch a dead animal. So I think it's a smell or something. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Red. Possum sounds a bit like a coward. I mean, he gets paralyzed with terror and fear in the event of an attack, incapable of making a decision when he needs it most? Why, if you ask me, I'm like, okay, I'm not a zoologist or anything. Granted, I failed science twice, good point. But again, if you ask me, I think it's a pretty wussy animal. That's a dumb nickname, Possum. <laughs> Boy, it freezes up in the event of emergency when he needs a decision most, he can't do it. <laughs> That's a pretty stupid choice. <laughs> Well, let's go to our next segment. Pretty stupid choice, the whole possum thing, right? Uncle Red, what do you think about the whole possum thing, the nickname? <laughs> Uncle Red? <laughs> 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 
You okay? Is he dead or something? <laughs> Bill was actually trying to help me out with a problem. I'd, uh, I'd lost my watch, and uh, he brought a metal detector to, and yeah, that's about as much help as Bill usually is, but this unit here, he's got the headphones and uh, battery pack, and he flips her on, and it, uh, it finds pieces of metal in the ground. Like there, you can see that tin, that tin can was picking it up, and Bill went to pick up the can, and oh my God, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That would get your attention, wouldn't it? The thing I have against the metal detectors is that you know, when people walk around with them, they look a little on the dorky side. And I really didn't want to be with Bill, but I wanted to get my watch back, too. No, I'm getting a little impatient with him, I gotta admit. I really didn't feel like spending the rest of the summer doing this. But he was he was getting something. He was getting close. You could you could hear it, you could hear it. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, I'd agree with that, Bill. Anyway, back at it again. Uh, he's starting to pick up a little something, so he says, anyway. He used to be around me somewhere. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, he, it was his battery. It was his battery belt. <laughs> so what he does, uh, he... Uh, tells me to go and get an extension cord. He unplugs uh, the battery pack. He's going to drop that. And we're going to run it right off of uh, the normal uh, lodge current, which is, I think, 98 volts or something like that. But it's way too much for a... And, oh, and then she just started to hum, you know. And it just didn't sound right to me, but he felt it would work you on. I have a metal fly in my pants. That's what happened there. But it was getting a bit out of control. I saved his life right there. Oh. <laughs> He's all right. He's all right. So I figured he got himself back together again. Uh, I should be able to, you know, to plug it back in. I didn't see him. Well, oh, 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 sorry, Bill. So this time he decides he's gonna, he's just gonna uh, hold his ground. He's gonna dig in. It's tough, it's tough for an older gentleman, and he's gonna dig right in, and the, now stuff starts moving, moving across the... Well, we have a lot of metal, uh, metal things around the lodge. Well, maybe things that we don't have a specific use for today, you know, or necessarily tomorrow. But, uh, certainly, uh, within the next two, three hundred years, uh, we'd have use for all of this stuff. And, Interesting thing here was that, uh, you know, I'd forgotten where that bike uh, was. Uh, that may affect traffic, that one. But uh, what he was doing was really collecting all of the stuff into one area, and I, when that was done, that was enough. And he's okay. And, and the great news is, uh, son of a gun, he had actually found my watch. So, you know, just when you least expect it. So, come on, Bill. Lunchtime. This was more of a challenge than finding a watch, I think. Kind of looks a bit like the CN Tower. Oh, oh, oh Bill, oh, Bill. No, he's all right. It is summer. You've eaten so many salads, you're turning into a rabbit. It was your wife's idea. <laughs> Things uh, going to school though, these days, Harold. Oh, not too bad. I'm, I'm having a little bit of a trouble with my driver education course. Now uh, you know, when I was in school, we didn't even have driver education. Well, I would have assumed that. I just think though, if you have to take one of these pro driving courses to get a reduced insurance rate of less than four thousand dollars a year, you shouldn't be forced to have three other students in the car with you. Take the pressure from the other passengers, that's all. Yeah. 
But still, I mean, the biggest problem is I can't hear the instructor over all the screaming. <laughs> Teenagers can really scream when they're terrified. And I don't know what they're screaming about. No, I'm not going to kill anybody unless I start hitting things a lot harder than I have been so far. <laughs> Does the school supply the car for the driver's lessons? Not anymore. <laughs> so you're using your dad's car now? Not anymore. Yeah. Please, no. Please, come on, no. please. No. <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, lots more. And the more, the merrier. <laughs> they say that sometimes about things when there's more of it. <laughs> It is summer. In the shade of an apple tree, you relax with a mint julep or nine. <laughs> summer is no time for stress. You casually forget your aunt's birthday. She thanks you. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to tell you how the wind-powered boat uh, turned out. Uh, we managed to find a, an old windmill at a miniature golf course that was going out of business and uh, had a nice big blade on her there and a smooth axle. And once we dumped the 400 golf balls out of her, she wasn't that hard to carry. <laughs> so we uh, bolted it right onto the boat and then we uh, patched all the screw holes and the mistakes. And uh, <laughs> then we ran a chain from the windmill uh, down to the generator we ripped out of my Studebaker. And then uh, we had that generator uh, hooked up to an electroplate uh, that went right into a big tank of distilled water. And uh, so that would get hydrogen there. Then we had a second windmill uh, to blow the hydrogen into the outboard motor. <laughs> uh, but then we got all that stuff in there. There was really just room for about one person, but hey, it was a prototype, you know. <laughs> and none of the guys had much faith in the mechanism work, but it surprised everyone by sinking. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess the wind-powered boat just stays as a dream for a while, but hey, it killed off a day, so it wasn't all bad. So, uh, if my wife is watching the show tonight, I'm gonna be coming straight home. Uh, if you want me to wake you, just tie a ribbon around the bedroom doorknob. <laughs> so, until next time, on behalf of myself and uh, Harold and the whole gang up here at the lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>